You see, I'm not only a reader, I'm happy also to be a professor in the university and I have to deal with students, not only with colleagues. And the students ask questions and want to know all sorts of things about what they are doing, why they are doing it, in what direction they should be going and so on. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to thank not only our very welcome and very eminent visitors, but the young people who brought us all together. Cave is political, and the center of the return to the study of the ancient thought of ancient thought is the return to political philosophy. And uh, the, uh, the interpretation of a political text, therefore, is not simply uh, in a moral intention to find out the best way of life or the best regime, but you can say that the great mystery to us is that Socrates said that the center of philosophy, the most important part of philosophy, is political Reckoning philosophy. Which is uh, uh, tied with any form of power. Power is always exposed to flattery. That is the main point in the whole construction of the uh, Constitution developed by Plato in the Republic is that it is not perfect in the sense of being durable, but as Professor Gardamer has already stressed, there will be made mistakes even in the so-called best city and it will go down through these very varieties of deformation uh, described in the second part of the Republic, down to the dream world of tyranny. So, the best policy should be understood realistically, as also the best policy is understood by Aristotle. The best is still miserable enough. I had the problem first from first year philosophy. We were given the doctrine of universals, and I was totally dissatisfied. And I went to Newman, read his grammar of ascent, the stickier parts about six times, the more rhetorical once, and I found my salvation there. 10,000 difficulties do not make a doubt. A doubt is in the order of existence, of decision. Difficulties is the order of intelligence. I would say there is an intimate connection with the experiences of perverted providence and the conceptions of being persecuted by somebody, being whoever it is, the bourgeois for a uh, Marxist or uh, the ma communist for the bourgeois uh, or uh, the CIA or the oil companies for uh, a leftist liberal and so on. Uh, all these conceptions of uh, persecution are perversions of the pronoia concept, of the uh, pronoia concept, uh, then producing a paranoid reaction. And these paranoid reactions now are, for instance, impinchons, uh, gravity is a rainbow, uh, detailed in a massive casuist. This uh, circle about the poet Stefan Gorge had a real impact on my life. I saw there for the first time uh, that uh, the magic impact of a great person, I was never acquainted with him personally, um, but this impact on a broader uh, circle of followers was uh, so deeply structurized in the same way in which the church is structurized. It means uh, appartenance, belonging to the group, is a certain warranty of salvation. And to be outside of the group may be recognizable as uh, quite good and quite nice, but extra ecclesia nulla salus. <laughs> so, uh, the really ungrateful thing about having to speak first on anything like this is that you roll the ball helpfully leftwards and you have the most un hor horrible experience of seeing that everyone speaks better than you, you do, more intelligently, and finally by the time it's got to the end of the row, they're up in the stratosphere, and you feel you've started at a very low point.
<laughs> then, even worse, it rotates, it comes back. <laughs> getting lower and lower. And uh, I now am reduced to the stage where I have to give you anecdotes. Well, I will. <laughs> Peter uh, Trinity and said, uh, I want to read Kierkegaard. What? Well, I said, you know, uh, <laughs> has much work been done on Kierkegaard in this country? Well, no, 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 that's true, it hasn't. So, but then surely there's a reason for that. <laughs> the theory of evolution, because the uh, world immanent processes presuppose always that if one species indeed should develop from one species into another species, that there must be something in species number one, which under certain circumstances can develop into species number, number two. And where does that peculiarity of number one come from and so on? And we get back into the regress, into a beginning which is ultimately a divine beginning. So the theory can only refer to immanent um, proximate causations, but not to the ultimate causation which determines the structure of reality as a whole.